Hi there everybody, it's Housie from Slim and Stylish and I'm a UK Stamping Up Independent Demonstrator and today I have this cute little box for you which could be given as an Easter present or just something on the table at Easter time and inside it, it holds this little box of mini eggs. For those that can't get this, it's one and three eighths of an inch across and three and a half inches deep so that will be the measurements for the box. Okay, I'm using the Your Inspiring set with the Myths and Magic paper. So it just corresponds to the bubbles that's on the paper. I don't know if you can see that, all the glitters. And I'll run through it quickly. It is such a quick and simple box to put together. So you need your scoring tool. And a piece of DSP. It is six inches by seven inches. Okay, and you want it on the six inches line. Turn it over because that's the side we're going to be using and you want to score it at one and three eighths. Okay, and you want to keep doing that all the way along. So then you want to go two and six eighths. Where am I? Yep. I didn't go two and six, I went two. That's two and six. Ignore that. Where's my a good trick if you ever score in the wrong place just grab your bone folder use the rounded corner and just run up the paper like that and I don't know if you can see it doesn't get rid of the score mark but it just pushes it back in so you can't notice from the outside it's a bit different on the glimmer paper which this is because it's got glitter in it but if you see that it kind of erases the score line a little bit so it's not can you see, so it's not as prominent because I've I've gone and scored in the wrong place. I'm trying to be quick. It is snowing like mad out the window. It's blowing a huge gale, and um, I'm unsure how long the light is going to hold. So I wanted to get get filmed pretty quick with this one. So it's one and three eighths, two and six eighths, four and one eighth, and then it's five and a half. Okay, so each one goes up in increments of one and three eighths. One and three eighths, two and six eighths, four and one eighth, five and a half. And then you want to turn it and go one and three eighths again. Then you want to go to four and seven eighths. And then you want to go to six and two eighths. Okay, I'll put all these on the blog for you, but just one again, that's one and three eighths, four and seven eighths, six and two eighths. Okay, if you want to fold and burnish all of these lines, I've just got to make sure I get the right ones now, it means I've put one in the wrong place. Silly me. The far one, that's it. Hopefully it's not too noticeable when I put it together. Okay, and then fold the bottom, fold the top in. And then you want to fold the top out. Like that, okay. So it sits like that. That's the idea of the box to start off with. When you're cutting it, you want to grab your snips and you want to cut this into flaps like you do with your normal bags or boxes. Just Like that, tab in. And tab in at the end. Just throw those away. OK, 
Okay, so that makes your box like that. For the top bit here, I'm using the envelope punch board. Now you can just cut or you can use one of the circle punches or if you have an old oval punch if you don't have the envelope punch board. But what you want to do is you see this fold, that's clear at, at the end, this one that's going the wrong way. You want to line this bit up, ignore the fact I've lost half of my nail today. <laughs> you want to line this bit up with the guide here so it's directly in the middle. Okay, so there's the fold and it's going directly in the middle of the mouth. Put it in and punch so it should do that. Fold your piece of paper over and do it again. It's a bit awkward once it's folded to get this under because it's quite thick and you really have to push because it's going through two sheets and this DSP is really thick. Come on. Hasn't gone through. There we go. I sometimes think having it on your grid paper isn't the best either because it gives it a bit of bounce. So if you've got a table underneath it, you can just push on. Take your grid paper off and it'll work just as well. Okay, are you going to go through? I'll push it that way. you've folded it with your bone folder so it is there we go it's a bit thinner to go through them and there is what you need to do for the top all you want to do now is where this starts to come back out which is sort of about there's the fold it's just past the fold you can just eyeball this you don't need to measure it and it's about that much okay probably about half a centimeter and probably about an eighth of an inch and just chop the top bit off you could if you wanted to do this on a shorter piece of paper but I don't think I think it's easier to have the top on and then cut down to where you want and that forms the tab that you attach at the top up here Okay, so just bring it together like you would a normal box. Just going to trim that there so you can't see it and turn that into a tab. Use your fast fuse to run it along. I don't know what Stampin' Up! are going to do to replace fast fuse. Fast fuse is going. It's going to be retired. But I, I don't know what Stampin' Up! are doing to replace it. I can't wait to see because I use Fast Fuse, well, as you know, such a lot. I love it. It's so useful. I much prefer it to Snail um, and to the Tombow. So I can't wait to see if they do replace it and what they give us. So there is my join. So this is the back of my card. So I want to push these two down that one down and then bring this over so I've got all of my joins at the back just run your fast fuse across put in your mini eggs or whatever it is you're giving try and get it in without getting the flaps tucked in there we go so that fits quite nice and tightly and then you want to bring these two in and push it in like that so it creates sort of a kiss top and it's just got the dome in the sides. I used the, the binder clips from the birthday suite. And it's got some gorgeous Bermuda Bay ones in there to go with the paper. And then just there to hold it together 
And that's really all I did for the box. I did, oh, I pushed that in a bit different at the top. To do that, all you need to do is just fold it backwards and forwards when you pinch it. the ribbon I used the celebration ribbons which is the Bermuda Bay one and the grey and these are shimmery and they're gorgeous okay I cut them about three inches for this for the grey that's just Three of those. One, two, three. There we go. And for these ones, about two and a half inches. One, two. three okay once you've got that this one was just a straight snip across on two of them so it was an angled cut and one of them completely straight and then this one I just triangle cut into the bottom like that and did that on all three of the grey shimmer ribbons lay those grey ones down flat and three glue dots one on each straight one goes up to this one straight down the middle and that'll be the middle one with the angle going that way you want to put this on the outside of that one so it's the outer one then with the angle going the other way you want to put that on the outside of this one bring those two together and then put the middle one in and that was really it for my bows. I put one glue dot at the back. Stuck it onto the top of the box up there. And then just sealed the box. So it sprayed out like that. A piece of Whisper White, the Happy Easter stamp from the Your Inspiring set with basic grey match the ribbon. Zoom that one up. Once you've done that, leave your basic grey out. You want the bubbles from the You're Inspiring. And just stamp those randomly at the top of where your Happy Easter is going to be. You want to use the one and three eighths of an inch punch to cut that out as a circle. And then the one and a half inch to cut a Bermuda Bay circle out and scrap scarf, card stock like that, stop card. I've done that a couple of times today. I went for lunch and 
I couldn't get my words out there either. It was quite embarrassing. I want your Bermuda Bay Light Stamping Blends and the Colour Lifter. And all you want to do using the bullet end is just colour all of these in. The bullet end is easier for this because you can just use it as a dot. Run over it with the colour lifter. And then you just want your Wink of Stella to add some colour so it matches what the DSP is like. You only really need to add the glitter to the, the bigger ones. Just going to use some fuse, but if you've got snail or tombow, that would be great there. Or a glue dot. Just stick that on. Grab a dimensional. Add it to the back. And just stick that onto the box there. And there is your Easter egg box to give away as a treat. I think mine might be for my godson and his sister. But there you go, mini egg boxes. Thanks everybody, speak to you soon, bye.